Hello guys and welcome to the first video that I hope to do several of for, for my YouTube channel. So um, I'm going to weather this car in a similar fashion as I've done a few others that I've posted a few pictures of on my Google Plus profile. But um, I'm going to show you the very simple techniques that, that I'm using. So today we're doing another l and hopper to match this two bay hopper. Um, very early prototypes. I think these were new and their new date is... Uh, uh, 1918 so they have by 1952 or 3 uh, the years that I model they have seen quite a bit of wear and tear damage and had a fairly hard life so and um, and we have a few others Norfolk and Western stuff that I, I model Norfolk and Western but Norfolk and Western interchanged with the Clinchfield and the L&N Railroad and there will be a lot of it's intermixed traffic um, okay so first is I really like working with with alcohol products 91% or higher alcohol so you can dull coat I've got a can of dull coat and I like the effects of dull coat um, it's really simple and a lot of people use it and I, I don't have anything against it I will say that it does take dry effect a little bit better and as you'll see as we do some dry effects in a minute that it will um, it does take a little bit more work to get the alcohol to take the dry material versus the dull coat where it sticks a lot better so First is I make them. I make my own weathering powders with uh, various chalks that I get. And this uh, artist chalk, uh, this particular color, I'm really fond of, and it gives an incredible rust. I've already shaved a bit of that material here, and we're just going to catch it in our artist tray to work with. So I use mostly the very orange color but it does it's a little too bright for true rust so we'll use a little bit of black material which I model an anthracite hauler railroad so black you need plenty of so we'll add a, a little bit of black powder to it not the fun black powder but also, everything I'm doing is with a mix of India ink that's, I mean, there's no way to give you a percentage on this. I just add alcohol. It evaporates pretty quickly anyway, and I just add alcohol and occasionally add a little bit of ink back to it. But um, test it out on your paper, and it's really quite thin at this point. So there couldn't be more than a few drops of India ink in it, which is, you know, incredibly, incredibly rich material. Um, when I'm working with something that I don't care about some black in, so in some of these other colors where I have... Um, white powder and some of these other dust colors I will use the absolute pure 91% alcohol to bring these dry mixes back to life or to make them up however for anything that has some black in it just use my face India ink mix to get a little bit of alcohol into the material the first thing we'll do is add let's take care of the trucks on the bottom of it because they're easy and they you a very quick, a very quick reaction, really, really quick change to the model. So, honestly, you could dull coat your models, paint the trucks, and, you know, maybe a touch here and there, and actually improve, improve your models considerably over what, over stock or over what uh, a lot of people do. So, this is a pretty dry mix, and we'll go back over it. So. I put it on kind of dry so that um, so I kind of work it into some gaps, etc. And then I'll go back and wash over it with just the India ink mixture um, and alcohol, or just plain alcohol to kind of mute it down a little bit or take some of the richness off from it. So, um, and part of the reason that I like working this method so well is that. I mean, it's not going to come exactly 100% clean with alcohol, but most of what you're doing is not very permanent, and it's an easy layer that you can put on and start manipulating. So, the really obvious stuff to do is the sides of the bright plastic trucks. So, they rust pretty much everywhere, especially on a model that's been in service for 30 years. Surely they've been worked on and maintained, but they are going to be very rusty. And 
Uh, sometimes we'll take them off. If I have the trucks off, I will go ahead and touch the tops of the journals um, and the tops of the components, but I do try to get the bottoms of them as well. Um, depends on the side of your layout and the height of your layout, exactly how critical some of this stuff will be, but I have a fairly high viewing height on the layout I'm building and one deck that is considerably above my height and that means that the underbelly of cars is visible in ways that is not typically so so anyway just get a little bit of this material on and touch it back up and, and it's going to be a little thick to begin with at least at the consistency that I like to work with it at But we will wash a little bit off from it, especially any spots that um, that degrade the the shape of all the components. Okay, that's pretty much it. Okay. some of this material. And I keep using the same brush for this material. Now, I, have, I have a brush for working with some dry materials. I have a brush for working with some of the lighter materials. Um, you know, a selection of small brush, brushes to touch into some of the smaller areas. Um, these are really, really incredible. Uh, you know, somewhat stiff. I haven't used this one today, but somewhat stiff uh, pointed that are incredible for pointing in uh, the rivet lines of the sheets that are uh, uh, very prone to rusting. So, all right material off. Now I find, and I can't explain the exact chemical properties that make this happen, but dull coat gives a texture and also changes of course the brightness of or shininess of, that's your job, but it does, dull coat changes the texture of a model and gives it a little something to bite. And for whatever reason, whether it's alcohol opening the pores of the paint or something to that effect because it has to be something like that. I find that the dry material does take somewhat well to the alcohol if not as well as if not as well as it does for dull coat. But we'll get a quick shot of this at a very thin consistency on. So this will take the sheen off the model and take the brightness down and start giving you an idea of where you'll want to darken it up and lay on some very serious weathering. Now you should look at a picture of the prototype you're modeling and, and there's some things that are you know somewhat obvious that are going to happen to every single car. They're going to rust in certain places. Pretty much all coal hoppers are going to be kind of dirty and black around the top. Um, you know, all, most of the trucks are fairly the same, etc. And you should also, and something people don't necessarily always tell you, is that you should definitely look at the era that you're modeling. So um, some of the guys who are modeling the much early, much later models, um, much more modern prototypes, do a tremendous lot more rusting and a tremendous lot more weathering on a lot of their models because age, uh, the economy, of the railroads, etc., have changed their ability to maintain, buy, repair, or replace equipment. Um, I model the early 50s, and some cars, such as the one that we're working with today, have seen a fairly long life on the railroad. However, 1950s, they were still doing pretty well um, from all the wartime efforts and wartime uh, money that the railroads had made. So, and that matters. Also look especially, of course, take a, a look at, at models and pictures of models in your region. There's different th effects that happen um, in Virginia and West Virginia, the areas that I model. There's particular effects to, uh, to equipment that may or may not be or will be different in or on western roads or on very, very southern roads or very, 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 very northern roads. So take that all into account. Okay, quick cover to give us something to let that stick to. Alcohol dries incredibly fast. Um, there is some tricks that you can use for certain things. Um, not done it a lot, but um, 
if you really want something to say it really quick, um, sometimes with um, these wood loads, you'll want to really darken some spots up and you'll lay it on and want it to sit there for a while so that it can soak in and darken some spots. But you can also use a blow dryer to um, cause that alcohol to basically disappear really quick. All right. One of the things that I absolutely love about working with uh, these dry mixes is that this was once just dry powder with a few drops of alcohol added to it, and it dries up. And a drop or two of alcohol added back to this mix will bring it back to life in a second. All right. We need some India ink. This stuff is incredibly powerful. There's a little bit in the bottom of that pan that we were using earlier, but it will come back to life. That little bit of empty ink that was there, an extra drop will add, will come back to life with very little 91% alcohol bought at the nearest pharmacy for a couple dollars. So there's not an expensive product I'm using here. I think all combined, I think, one of these brushes probably cost as much as every other component here. So it's not necessary to spend a tremendous amount of money buying some branded weathering powders. As you've seen, I made mine from some fairly cheap artist chalk and some of these other colors front come from a $2 pack of Crayola Street Kids Street chalk from Walmart or Target or something. A couple dollars. So. All right, let's see how far this gets us. And an eyedropper or a pet would be a tremendous lot easier than doing it with a brush. But we might as well bring our dust color back to life because we're definitely going to be using that one. So the colors that we definitely want to use Today are this is a chalk mix with of, uh, of the closest to rust color I can find one of my favorite colors with a bit of black added maybe one to three black to rust color something in that neighborhood this is the straight black chalk with alcohol added to it this is a sepia color I like real well. Looks really good for road dust. Um, I also have a nearly white, this might be called gray or something similar to that. Actually, that's what it is. Um, looks really good on some cars, not necessary for a hopper because it's going to be black and rust. And then um, this is just India ink and alcohol. And then here is some dry of the sepia that we'll use at the end. And I use this more as a buffing powder, if, in, if nothing else, than anything else. Some of it will stick. Um, a lot of it is about giving us some a, a bit of an abrasive that will also uh, rub into the color of dirt, dust, grime. So, that's those things. All right. So let's put rust in some key areas. So, um... First, these are some hard to reach places, but, and don't you trust this very well if you ride Amtrak or something, is that all the brake equipment that you depend on so much is always incredibly rusty, never painted, and completely unmaintained. But, it works, and for our purposes, and for model purposes, it's always extremely rusty. And on a hopper, incredibly hard to get to box cars, um, really nice, really easy to get to, very easy to rust, um, and as I suggested on my particular layout, the very top deck is at a considerably above eye level, and the track is near the perimeter, which means that some of the other carriages under some circumstances may be more visible. So. Let's pick up what we've got to work with, though. Okay. Um, the 
this brightness platform definitely gets rusty as it is a, def a good place for it doesn't take much but very little on and actually when we come back and wash it with Indian ink and alcohol the goal will be to take more of it off so the brake wheel and the chains and the brakeman's platform will definitely rust um, you'll see there's already if possible you'll see already discoloration that that we definitely want um, uh, ladders tend to rust so I'll touch them a little bit now and maybe come back and touch them a little bit more um, after the fact so I'm not too worried about couplers I do those in a separate thing I may do a video on what I'm doing with those this car still has KDs on it um, I will surely replace it with certain couplers soon so all right now some of that material so we can work just the black materials so this is going to be a pretty rich mixture to begin with again the great thing about alcohol is it's semi-permanent I suppose that and it like I said it's pretty rich material so we'll take this material with a touch of the dry and alcohol material that gives uh, a bit of a texture to it you know, when coal dust is on stuff, it's not just a color. It does not look like it's been painted with black spray paint. It has a texture to it. So you want to use a pretty rich India ink mixture to give it color. And the dry black material gives it a texture that's pretty hard to replicate any other way. So these, of course, your shoots are always going to be extremely dusty. And I go ahead and do, as I've said, the undercarriage. Uh, you may not have to put much focus on that, but in my case, I have to lay that on pretty good. And then a little bit more of that material. And a little shovel's handy. You don't see immediate results, but once you've done this, just a time or two in this method, you'll see how quickly when you come back to it, you can see the material building up on here, and it will look like exactly like what you expect, grime, dirt, dust, and it has a visible texture to it. Um, even at this small of a scale, it has a visible texture, and it definitely doesn't look like just paint. It has variations and high spots and low spots and, and I really like this method versus just color so uh, an airbrush has its place and I'm not so sure that coming back over top of my models with an airbrush uh, an effect is not going to be something I'll do I think it's a really good idea to do and some of the guys have suggested that This, this method does tend to have a bit of, and maybe not so much in using the dry materials as much as the India ink materials, tends to have a bit of a streakiness to, nature to it that I'm not 100% satisfied with my results on, but the chalk buffing compound method is somewhat satisfactory so far. So, this is a process, and... And until you dull coat it, you can continue to work it. So, I don't plan on dull coating these in the near future. Um, as I perfect my method, then I'll dull coat. Alright. Those last little spots, make sure everything's covered. It's easy to come back and hit it again, however. Alright. Now let's find a place to put our finger that's not destroyed in our, our work already. And 
lace of material to the outside of this. Now you'll want a, um, I don't use this dry material a lot on it, just it's, it's a little more intense of a mixture. So um, I like just the India ink and a pretty stiff mixture of alcohol to color. So, and immediately it looks um, extremely streaky. It does dry a little bit better than that. And like I said, we will lay some dry material on top of it. Um, you don't want it to be incredibly even. Um, you know, cold doesn't hit the cards incredibly even. Um, I think the end caps get it pretty bad. It depends on the type of loaders. Again, the era that you model is going to contribute to that. So, uh, you know, flood loaders have a different effect on loading hoppers than um, the single style loaders that um, were used predominantly in the 50s. So, where they had to stop the loading process between each car. So, with flood loaders, it's not a clean process at any time, but it tends to be, um, you know, where they hit a little bit early and it hits the front of the car. Um, and with uh, traditional uh, single car loading methods, it tends to be a lot of dust around the sides of the car just because of how the chutes tend to work. So, again, picky about your model, but... And just get some material on. We can adjust that by using either more of the rich India ink mixture uh, with alcohol, or if you will, if we want to remove some of that, we can use straight alcohol. Um, on some older uh, pieces of rolling stock, you may your mileage may vary with using straight alcohol or even this ninety one and and. Um, India ink mixture because of the way and, and products that they used for paint and more importantly more noticeable more rememberable by me with some of those models is how bad it affected decals but that don't seem to be the case on these modern models alright and coal also tended to pool in a few areas um, above the coupler housing it's not uncommon to see coal pool in around the brake equipment, uh, you know, anywhere that it has a place to sit. We'll come back and hit a few key areas too with rust after we've got this material on and before we do the dry. Um, uh, the corners and there's a few reasons why that would happen that they're that are open and exposed tend to rust uh, pretty bad on these uh, slope end hoppers so we'll definitely want to lay some of our rust mixture on there maybe to make a little bit more of that material up uh, like I said you can make this material up in small batches it's easy to add a little bit of alcohol back to it to bring it back to life at any time it's also really easy to just kind of make on the fly so Could cover, let's not cover our rust work there. But could cover of get down behind your grab irons if you're lucky enough to have modeled equipment that has the not molded on grab irons. I absolutely can't stand those pieces of hardware. There's just something about these meticulous molded grab irons. And you have a quite grimy car. And you could probably about stop there. But, so, again, there's a few key areas that you collect, of course, your top bevel. Um, on most layouts, where you have a slightly higher viewing angle, which admittedly is pretty good for switching, you do see that the top of the car is more than anything else. You'll definitely want to do that. Um, I'm not weathering the interior of this car. Um, I use a, uh, you know, I don't, typically take the loads out. This one will have a load for it. I'll typically take the loads out and I will have a uh, you know a system in place on the layout for switching the loads and empties out um, not live on the layout but between operating sessions and, and such and I'm not going down the road of building a, a loader that operates. At one time I thought I would but 
not. I don't think so. Okay, now we got some color. Now we'll go back and lay some rust on, get a little bit of this blackness out, and let's see if we have enough rust material to to take care of a few rust spots that we want to capture on here. I think we probably do. may have better luck with wetter or drier mixes depending on what I'm doing I think I want to get it on sometimes I will use a fairly dry mix but if you just want to get uh, or if you want to especially get it into uh, detailed areas um, I really like the um, really wet mix to let it flow into the seams under the doors and some of that that tend to happen around um, boxcar doors and for our case here We've got plenty for what we're going to do. Um, the corners, we'll want to make sure that we hit those real lightly. And then we'll come back to just the UV ink mix and kind of clean this up in just a second. So, it doesn't take much. You'll barely be able to see until it starts to dry. But as you as it starts to dry, the alcohol will go away and the particles, and the particulate matter that, that are the um, chalk, will start to shine and show their texture. So, you hit your corners a little bit. This is the water sets, grab irons are really common to rust, fortunately can. Just a little bit of air. Just about alcohol. I mean it's black to look at it, but it's just about alcohol. It's gonna flow down behind our grab iron to make sure that rust doesn't cover up our car. And then use a little bit of that straight alcohol mix to there's a, a few spots where you'll notice it lays in area in, in ways and in shapes that appear to not be extremely natural. So in those areas I just kinda of wash those out. So Find our grab irons make that look harder area to make it consistent but you want to do that to add a little bit more color to that and you can just take the brush and flow it just kind of push it in there and let it flow down behind the grab irons and that will give you a somewhat smoother consistency try to make some quicker movements that seems to be a little less prone to Okay. All right. Now, use that small point brush. That one. And we'll uh, give a little bit of a point to it. Roll it around and get it to point up just a little bit. We're going to point a few of these areas that tend to collect rust. So these divisions between the bays of the hopper tend to rust. And small lines, you can even, and you may, especially on newer model prototypes, you will have better luck with rust spotting than larger areas of rust. So here I'm just spotting a few areas that will show through on the rust. And we'll wash this car again with a little bit of uh, Indian so just touch those key areas with rust that tend to get bad make sure you get in there real well with the brake equipment because like I said they always rust horribly but 
rivet lines tend to rust out pretty bad. Very gently touching those will bring a little bit of life to it. Uh, tend to do that a lot on flat cars. I like the way that looks where the rivet lines on the bottom of the car always tend to rust pretty bad. But think about how water affects this equipment as well because when the car is running empty and there's water setting in there, that water is going to, going to obviously do what it does. It's going to oxidize the metal and cause it to rust at the air, where and in the areas that the water would set. So touching those key areas along the bottom, like I said, especially where, where water would sit, will bring a little life and believability to the model. All right, that's all. Okay, now. The last trick of what I'm doing, and I'm still working on perfecting this, is this dry mix of a little bit of black in there. Um, I don't want to clean dirt, if that's the way to say that, but in this sepia color, which is um, uh, it's closer to tan than anything else. And this brush that I used, that I picked alcohol with up, which dries out incredibly quick, it's pretty easy to pick the material up and get it on the car. Now, it will not stick to the car, not like using dull coat, but you can get it on a flat surface. And then I use a few methods, one of which mostly just being my fingers, to rub that material in. Like I said a minute ago, I use it as, as much as a buffing compound as a coloring agent, but it will leave its effects as a coloring agent. So. These, um, it's just a makeup applicator, so you can either try to talk your wife out of it or maybe catch her gone and take it if you don't want to have to explain what you're doing with it. But they're not bad for rubbing this material in. And just so a couple things is that the India ink tends to streak in the way that you brush, you're actually going to brush down. So, working in opposite direction to that does remove some of that streakiness material and it's not bad at all this also helps you keep it from getting into the rivet lines and I'll show you in a second how I peel some of that out that inevitably gets stuck in there um, I also use my fingers a lot for it especially in areas where I've used a high concentration of the black because it, of course, the more blacks in there, the more noticeable streaks will be. And getting my fingers in there, I can rub with some some force. I also save the material sometimes, especially if I use very much. So I'll take a little bit of that off. All right. And I don't want the dirt to stick into the rivet lines. So a toothpick down the rivet lines will take that that tends to pack in there out. All right. And that's the effect. So, with the dry powder material, it doesn't seem to be that the streakiness is very evident. It does look like it has had a pretty heavy coloring of coal grime that has built up from it being loaded and unloaded and quite a bit of dust, some on top, some not. 
that has been picked up along the road at 25 miles an hour and a little bit of rust it's got some age on it but in the 50s they were still maintaining their equipment pretty well so I'll leave you with that while I complete the other sides if you want to take the same procedure to the ends um, not a lot different to them uh, on flood load cars you may want to concentrate and make a pretty rich um, coal because a lot of times the operator depending on his skill level may uh, start or end the loading process uh, slightly before or after the end of the car you know, natural tendency but all right hope you enjoyed good luck with your with your weathering efforts I absolutely believe in making our equipment look like it's done a day's work Thank you.